you can get in your time machine with me and go back to 2018, before the thing, right? 2018. Uh, we did something called Compass 2020. And the something we did was, number one, predicting all wrong what would happen in 2020. <laughs> but we thought, listen, God has been good to our church. We feel like God has established our church. Uh, you know, we could stay in our lane and just, you know, keep doing what we're doing. Or we could think about uh, investing, frankly, financially in doing what we're doing and, and, and spilling that out into all kinds of areas. And of course, we were all committed to and have been from the start to the Great Commission. We understand that we're supposed to make disciples of all the nations. We're supposed to baptize them in the authority of the triune God. And that we're supposed to teach those followers of Christ to observe, to obey all that Christ had commanded. And around here, we like to summarize all that. We've got to reach them with the gospel before we baptize them. We've got to teach them, of course, to obey. And we have to train them up because the 11 that were there that were sent out, along with many others that Christ had trained, they need to be trained. So we talk about reaching, teaching, and training, and we do a lot of that around here. We're excited about that. We know that's our goal, but we thought, could we do more? Could we see what God is doing here? Could we see that replicated elsewhere? And so uh, we needed to invest, and we said if we could take our regular investment and try and go beyond, right? And something that goes beyond what we normally feel the obligation to do, uh, as we should, to just give and support our church. If we could invest uh, an extra amount of giving to get us, like if we got $25 million, what could we do to expand what we're doing? And one of the things that we did as we started to do this in 2018 is to envision something called the Compass Church Planting Association, which you've been around here, you know. Our church has been replicating in places like Huntington Beach and Tustin, out in the Treasure Valley, up in the Boise area of Idaho, out in the hill country outside of San Antonio, our newest one that you know about, uh, we've been talking about in North Texas. Uh, all of those church plants, including our international church planning, our, our flagship, if you will, our Compass Bible Church in Guatemala City, these are all things that we said, if we can just go and, and put personnel in there, we can fund them, we can pay their salaries, we can get them started, we can buy their equipment, we can send people to go seed that place, and sure enough, God has blessed every single one of those church plants, except for the one that hadn't started yet, which of course is blessed with a lot of people that are committed to going. Now, we said, this would be good. We can take what God is doing here we can expand it. And of course, all of these churches need people that are highly committed, that are trained to do ministry. So in the training segment, we know reaching people, the best way to do that, planning new churches, sharing the gospel in communities. Now we said, we got to train people. So we prayed, and as we gave, we gave together. We saw that building across the street there uh, that we, none of us could pronounce the name of the building. Uh, but we said, listen, we keep seeing it all the time in every picture we take of our of our building. There it was in the reflection, 145 Columbia. Uh, let's buy that building and establish the Compass Bible Institute. So we bought it, we gutted it, we got it cleaned up enough to put you inside to have a meeting, uh, probably against all the OSHA laws that exist, but we, we came in there, uh, rebels for Christ, we met together and we said, let's think about what God can do in making this an, a training institute. And some of you were there, you wrote on the walls. How many of you were in that meeting? Do you remember? Some of you were, we, we wrote on the walls and we prayed that God would utilize that place and we prayed that a rainbow would descend on it. No, we didn't pray for that, but, <laughs> but there was that wonderful picture uh, that we snapped there of, of Compass when we had it finished there, CBI, Compass Bible Institute, where God had begun to start and put in motion there in the worst of times, right? When people said, well, I'd like to give this, but the economy's crazy and my work is falling apart and COVID and all that went on. It was like uh, we want one hand tied behind our back. God kept moving us forward. And we started to see, we even had our first graduations. We started to graduate students. We had our first commencement ceremony not too long ago. Uh, we have there a budding library, a lounge. We have classrooms. We've got a full course of menus of, of classes that people can take. Uh, took this picture in our uh, apologetics class that's going on on Tuesday nights just a couple weeks ago. These are all there for credit. These are not people that are auditing the class, that are just there listening to the lectures. They're all taking the class, reading the textbooks, writing the papers. Uh, this has been an exciting thing to see God establish this through our corporate giving, our, our extra giving to say, God, what will you do to expand what's going on uh, here in our church and see that spread elsewhere. One thing we did where we do want people 
to just come and audit is the National Equip Conference. You might remember we had our first one. We're going to try to do this every other year as God supplies. That first one was all based on the sufficiency, the authority, uh, the, the importance of the inerrancy of Scripture. Everything that, that is the center of our church, we want to see that spread across the country to the extent that we have influence. So we want to reach people with the gospel. We want to do that here in our own local community. We want to do that by replicating our church in other communities, which we've been doing. We want to see a training take place here and across the country and see people drawn to our institute to be trained to do ministry. And then, of course, we said that third priority is to make sure that teaching goes on here in a facility that is equipped to make it happen. And we know preaching of the word can happen in any kind of building. It happens in ornate buildings, in fancy Gothic buildings. It's happened in the most plain and simple buildings in church history. It's happened in houses and old school houses. It's happened in, 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 in decorative places. It's happened in modern uh, contemporary settings. But we said, listen, we know our history uh, that we're willing to meet anywhere. Uh, this is where we started, out here on a lawn. Bring your own lawn chair. Uh, thankfully, you don't have to bring your chairs anymore uh, to sit in church. We set up our little you know, pop-ups for shade. And uh, then we thought, well, we need a place to meet where we don't get... Uh, you know, rained on or sunburnt. So uh, God provided. We did something very New Testament, and we rented out sp a space in the Jewish synagogue. Some of you might remember that if you were a, an old-timer here with us. This was like 16, 17 years ago, and we went in there, and I started to preach on the book of Hebrews. Uh, I'm not sure that was the wisest decision, but... Uh, it made an impression on the rabbis, I will say that. They would sneak in about the time I'd start to preach, and I'd see them along the back there uh, kind of marveling at our uh, understanding of their uh, Old Testament. But it, we, we, we saw God continue to put his good hand of growth upon us. We didn't have a baptismal. Strangely enough, they didn't have one there for us at uh, Temple Bethel. <laughs> So we'd go to people's uh, backyards, we'd find people with pools that would handle that, we would inflate pools you know, in various places to, to see people express their commitment to Christ as new Christians, and uh, we really needed a home. And thankfully, we found a place that's right next door, 140 Columbia, it used to be Cox Communications till they ran off to Rancho Santa Margarita, and we put our sign up, we signed a lease, we started renting, and then the building you're sitting in here, then we acquired after that, we were able to, to buy some chairs and set this up, uh, very happily unwrap the chairs, and, uh, and, and then we started holding services. And our kids, of course, we have a community with a lot of families with kids. We find the, this extreme and, and profound importance of training those kids. So every square foot of the facility we try to utilize for kids, and sometimes they would take over this building in the summers, and <clears throat> we'd do all kinds of things that we could to maximize the facility that we had. Uh, the parking lot, some of you have been to some of our outdoor events, and yet still, our kids often had to meet in homes, or sometimes we'd pitch tents and parking lots and various places to teach our kids the Bible. So our little campus here began with that building right there in the middle, 140 Columbia, put an O there for offices, that's where our offices were, and then we were able to acquire next door, which was our auditorium and classrooms, and that's how we started back in the day, and we said, God, we need more space, so we looked at this particular building. They were selling mortgages, I think, in the heyday back then, and all kinds of strange things happening there, but they went away. We saw the opportunity. We said, God, we'd like to turn this into a set of classrooms. We designed a classroom that had a big meeting space where we could have our junior high hires meet, and the kids throughout the week would invade that space. Our Awana ministry would take place in that building, and God used it in all the surrounding classrooms in that meeting space to be used for God. So that was a wonderful expansion of the campus, but we kept growing. We kept seeing our need for kids' ministry and kids' space grow. So this particular building we affectionately call 120 West. We found out how many people don't know the difference between East and West, but we... <laughs> We still call it that. One day we'll name it after someone. But right now, it's 120 West. But that building came uh, available. We said we could make this a classroom space. Of course, our high school ministries were growing. We wanted to make a big area to meet with them and surrounding classrooms, which, of course, we use it all the time for all kinds of events. Every day of the week, it seems, that building is used and transformed into something else. Uh, we've got all kinds of uh, events there, trying to get people to think about the needs around the world. Our kids have met in that facility. Of course, in the summertime, we have all the crafts and all the things that go on during our day camps in that facility. That particular building has been used greatly, day in and day out, and yet still we find our kids are often 
because we have so many of them put in various corners of our campus, and sometimes it's not ideal situations, and they're sitting on the floor, and all kinds of things that have made us think if God could allow us to have a little bit more space, we could make this happen, or our kids' ministry would be ideal. <clears throat> and that's what we've been praying for as the third component of our endeavor to go beyond our regular giving to say, what can we do to reach, teach, and train in a way that will uh, do it well, do it really well in the facility that we have. So with the provision in the Compass 2020 um, endeavor, we had this building that you're sitting in, at least on the drawing board, be utilized and set apart in our minds for just being an auditorium. We would need to turn the offices into classrooms. With the acquisition of the uh, 145 building and the establishment of CBI, we said for now CBI is small enough where we can put the offices upstairs and we can get the offices out of that 140 building. But of course, uh, to work on that 140 building, we'd need to take it from what it was, which was old offices, used to be Cox Communication, and we'd need to demo the whole thing. And this was all a part of the financial expenditure that we wanted to invest in this campus as our last priority of the three. And so we did. We gutted it out. We remodeled it. We redesigned it. And I'm here to tell you, and the reason I'm in the middle of this service blabbing at you with a PowerPoint presentation is I want to announce very gladly that today is the day that it is finally ready to go. The building is ready and after the service I'm going to invite you to take a tour with me. Here's some pictures we just recently took of it. It's all ready to go. Everything's ready except for furniture and kids and all that's going to be coming uh, next week. But all these rooms are ready for the kinds of things that we're committed to doing in the lives of our children and that is to see them rooted and grounded in the truth of God's word in the best possible way that we can. So today is the grand opening and the dedication. And when the service is done, I'd love for you to go out between the buildings here. We're going to pray a prayer of dedication, and we're going to open the doors and let you tour this so that you can see it, not just on a screen. So that's a good announcement, isn't it? There's more. There is more. That was a cheesy slide, but I threw it in anyway. <laughs> if this is going to be our auditorium, of course, we said, well, if we have enough, we, we, we go, our goal was $25 million. If we could raise that beyond our regular budget, we could do all the things that we set out in 2018 to do. We wanted to see it culminated with 20 months of giving into 2020. That was the whole focus. And uh, we didn't, because of all that went on with our economy, didn't quite make that. But with $15 million, we said we can do the things we want to do, starting the school, planning these churches. We can start working on our facility. And all of those things have come to fruition, just like dominoes, every one of them by God's grace and good hand. Uh, but this building now has classrooms in it that are now obsolete because they're brand new and state-of-the-art right across the parking lot. So we said this is the goal to turn this into a lobby, which we have ready to go, permits, all of that. We've been working hard on getting this to happen, and I want to give you just a little sense of the latest finalized drawings of all that's about to be built, and to give you a reason why there's going to be yellow tape and pardon our dust, and you've seen some things happening on the side of our building, but you know soon we're going to have that, all that demoed. We're going to have to work around that to get in the building, but this particular, that arrow is if you face from between the buildings, this is now the grand entrance into the auditorium. We'll have a lobby for the rare Southern California day that it rains. It's super helpful to have that. Uh, it's also going to be helpful just to have a gathering point that's not there in a parking lot, which will be kind of nice. If you look to the north, uh, this is looking to the north. We'll have uh, stairways up to the upstairs classrooms that we'll continue to utilize for some of our kids' ministry. If you look to the south, if you know north and south, it's that way. If you look to the south, right, this is looking south. Our bookstore will move from over here in the corner, which sadly we don't even pass by. Now everyone's going to pass by the bookstore every, every time you come to church. And it'll be a great, very inviting space that'll spill out into the lobby, of course, information kiosk. And if you look closely at this particular uh, graphic, maybe you can see just poking through that, looking really close there, uh, you can see there is a place for the kids to play. This is the spot that we have... Design, you've started to see, if you ever go out this direction, the fence has gone up, and it's going to be a uh, giant play area. It's all been, uh, I, I've been told it's been ordered, it's all ready to go, and we're ready to put it in. Now, I know you're going to miss our old attempt at a play <laughs> area. 
I know that was really impressive. The reason a lot of you said, the reason I come to Compass Bible Church, their, their little litter box they have out in front <laughs> for our children. But I want you to get past that. We tried to get you past that because we really needed that space. We've used it for, uh, we made a platform out of it and a staging for that. It's been great for our outdoor receptions for weddings after we do services in our church. It's also been part of a platform for our preaching during COVID as we spilled outside. If we ever have to go outside again, we've got a spot for that. So this little area is going to be gone. And that went up to about, I don't know, my chin. Uh, this is giant. And it goes way overhead. You can see the scale here. I think these are normal-sized children. But it's very, it's very tall. And uh, from every angle here, you can see it's going to be a place your kids are going to love to hang out and play. And it's uh, just a fantastic uh, next domino that's about to fall. God has done all the things that we have planned, even though we've had to economize it. Uh, the last stage would be in this building and doing some changes here. All of those things are penciled but on hold because, of course, you know, we, we, we just have looked at what we've got resource-wise and said, okay, we're just going to trust God. The last priority will be us in here. We've got our kids prioritized before us in terms of their facility, but at least we'll do something here, uh, and it will depend on how God provides. But the whole point of this is that we're about making disciples, reaching, teaching, and training, and this is our philosophy of ministry. This is our goal. Everything stems from that, and that's why we're here. You can learn a lot more about this. We used to have uh, beautifully uh, colored, nice, bright orange brochures we passed out to everyone. All that's now digitized. If you want to know about it, if you're new to the church, if you haven't been here, uh, maybe before 2018, 2019, I would encourage you to go to compassav2020.com. CompassAV2020.com. At least we'll get you up to speed as to all we were doing, our financial goals, what we wanted to see happen with all of that. And we know that every one of these things we've started, including the school and all these church plants, right, they need to be continually funded, but we wanted to seed and get those started. And, and that's what we've done. And now <laughs> we're into the last few phases of what we planned way back in 2018 to see 2020 provide what we needed to get some of these things done. So I'm excited to report that to you. Uh, there's no convenient time for me to come to your house and explain it all to you, so I thought I'd wait till we can get together here on a Sunday morning and tell you that's where we're at. So I hope that you're excited about that, and in just a little while when we're done, we'd love to have you come out there and have a prayer of dedication, then love to tour you through it. You can just just work through there, shoulder to shoulder, and see our great new facility uh, in 140 Columbia.